Allah Akbar Allah Oh hi everybody, it's me Mr. White, here with another video lecture for you. This time, we're learning all about the golden age of Islam and the Islamic Caliphates. So just like all of our other video lectures, you're going to need to take good notes as you go along. Uh, there's lots of information, so make sure you write it down. And after you watch this video, there's going to be a short video quiz on Moodle. So make sure you follow the link that's located in the information section down below to take the video quiz after the video is over. Well, now, before we get into all this information about the caliphates and the golden age of Islam, you're going to need just some basic facts about the religion of Islam itself. Islam is a monotheistic religion that was founded in the Arabian Peninsula during the 7th century AD. The founder of this religion was the Prophet Muhammad. When he was about 40 years old, Muhammad received what many believed to be the final revelations from God, whom Muslims refer to as Allah, which literally means the Almighty in Arabic. Muhammad used these new revelations to establish a brand new faith, which he called Islam, meaning peace through submission to Allah. The revelations received by the Prophet were written down in the Holy Book of Islam, the Quran. Muhammad's message was not well received by the polytheistic people of his hometown, Mecca, and he was exiled along with a small group of his followers. They went north to a more tolerant city known as Medina, where they were allowed to worship freely. In time, Muhammad's followers came to be called Muslims, which means one who submits to the will of Allah. Years later, Muhammad and his followers returned to Mecca and took control of the town. During his lifetime, Muhammad's religion spread all across the Arabian Peninsula. Muhammad's followers converted many of the Arab tribes to this new religion. Islam also included a set of religious laws known as Sharia. This meant that Islam was a political as well as a social phenomenon. As the ruler of Islam, Muhammad was not just a holy man, he was a political leader too. You may remember that we call this type of government a theocracy. This was the beginning of a new Islamic empire, also known as the Caliphate. When Muhammad died, there was a huge problem. He had no male heir. Now, being that the Arabian society was male dominated, this was a huge problem. Muhammad had several daughters, but no sons and he also never named a successor. So when he died, there was much debate over who should take over. Eventually, Muhammad's disciples chose Abu Bakr, who is actually Muhammad's father-in-law, to become Caliph, which means the political and religious successor to the Prophet Muhammad. Now, Abu Bakr took power in 632 AD, and he united all of the Arab tribes together. Eventually, Abu Bakr and his Islamic army would spread the religion of Islam all across the Middle East and even into North Africa. As a united force, the Arabs could turn their energy towards conquering their neighbors instead of fighting with each other. Many faithful Muslims felt that it was a religious obligation to spread the faith by any means necessary, even violence. They believed that jihad, or a struggle in the way of Allah, was justified if it helped to spread the faith. The Arab armies were also led by many clever and brave generals who motivated their soldiers by telling them that a courageous death in battle would ensure them a spot in paradise. Only 20 years after Muhammad's death, the Islamic Caliphate stretched all the way from Egypt in the west to Persia in the east. One remarkable feature of the Islamic Caliphate was its tolerance for other monotheistic religions. Jews and Christians were allowed to live in peace and practice their religion freely under the Islamic Caliphates. Muslims believed that Muhammad was the last of a long line of prophets which began with Abraham, the father of Judaism, and included other biblical prophets such as Moses and Jesus. Due to their similar beliefs, Jews, Christians, and Muslims were known as people of the book. Despite their tolerance for Jews and Christians, those who chose not to convert to Islam were subjected to paying higher taxes. The Caliphate also allowed some local officials of conquered places to remain in power, so long as they converted to Islam. You know, they say history repeats itself, and when Abu Bakr died, 
This was a perfect example of history repeating itself. He, like Muhammad, had no clear successor, and so once again, there was more arguing and fighting over who should be caliph. This led the next two caliphs to be assassinated. Eventually, Muhammad's son-in-law, a guy named Ali, became caliph. He ruled for five years, but then he too was assassinated. After Ali was assassinated, one of his chief rivals, a very powerful general named Muawiyah, became the next caliph. He established a dynasty that would last nearly a hundred years, and he moved the capital from Medina to Damascus in modern-day Syria. The dynasty that Muawiyah created became what was known as the Umayyad Caliphate. Muawiyah was known for being a strong and virtuous leader. He was not quick to resort to violence, but he would not hesitate to use the sword to spread the influence of Islam. During the Umayyad Caliphate, Islamic armies conquered all of North Africa along the Mediterranean coast. By the year 710, Muslim armies crossed the Strait of Gibraltar and invaded Spain. Within 15 years, nearly all of the Iberian Peninsula was under Muslim control. The Umayyads controlled Spain from their regional capital, Cordoba. Muslims continued to rule Spain right up until the 15th century. Despite their successes in Western Europe, the Umayyads were never able to conquer Eastern Europe. Muslim armies tried unsuccessfully to conquer the Christian Byzantine Empire in 717 AD. Despite these minor setbacks, the Umayyads ruled a massive empire. They moved their capital city from Medina to Damascus in Syria. And by the end of the 8th century, nearly all of North Africa, the Middle East, and large parts of Europe were under their command. Despite the great successes of the Umayyads, some major problems began to weaken the power of their caliphate. For one, the size of the empire made it difficult to control. The caliph in Damascus was not able to effectively rule areas near the far-flung frontiers of his empire. The empire also faced economic problems that further weakened the dynasty and undermined their authority. The biggest problem, however, came from a rebellion that began in what is now Iraq. You probably know it is Iraq, but you say it like that, Iraq. A brave warrior called Hussein, the son of the former caliph Ali, you might remember he was Muhammad's son-in-law, started a revolt against the Umayyad rulers in the year 680. Hussein and his supporters fought bravely, but all were eventually killed by the powerful Umayyad army. This uprising led to a major schism, or split, in the religion of Islam. Those who supported Hussein argued that only direct descendants of Muhammad should be allowed to rule the caliphate. These people became known as Shia Muslims. Those who supported the Umayyad rulers became known as Sunni Muslims. Islam is still divided like this today. In modern times, the majority of Muslims, around 80%, identify as Sunni. Shia Muslims are the minority. Today, most Shia Muslims live in the modern-day nations of Iraq and Iran. As time went on, people began to resent the Umayyads for their favoritism of Arab Muslims over non-Arab Muslims. You know, for example, non-Arab Muslims were not allowed to be a part of the Umayyad dynasty's bureaucracy. Uh, also, like many other dynasties in the past, you know, once again we talk about history repeating itself, wouldn't you know it, the Umayyad dynasty became very corrupt, they were wasteful, they got into a lot of debt, and this caused their dynasty to become unstable. Eventually, in the year 750, a very powerful general who was actually a descendant of Muhammad's uncle, a guy named Abu al-Abbas led an army against the Umayyads. He eventually overthrew the Umayyads and created a new dynasty of his own, known as the Abbasid Caliphate. Abu al-Abbas moved the capital city from Damascus in Syria to Baghdad on the Tigris River in modern-day Iraq. Baghdad was a busy cosmopolitan city due to its location along major trade routes including the Silk Road. 
Controlling these important trade routes made the Abbasids extremely wealthy. During this time, Baghdad would have been one of the most splendid cities on earth. In addition to being a center of trade, Baghdad was also a cultural crossroad. People from Europe, Africa, and East Asia interacted and shared important ideas and new technologies in the city's bustling markets. This was known as the Golden Age of Islam. New universities were established to develop knowledge of science, medicine, literature, astronomy, and mathematics. Muslim scientists are credited with inventing chemistry. They also refined optics for use in telescopes and magnifying glasses. Muslims invented the astrolabe, a device that made navigation at sea easier and more accurate. Doctors in Baghdad were the first to understand and accurately explain how the human heart functions. Muslim scholars also preserved knowledge, especially knowledge of the ancient Greeks and the Romans. Much of this would have been lost after the collapse of the Roman Empire. Eventually, the knowledge preserved by Islamic scholars would spread to Europe and spark the Renaissance in the 15th century. In addition to the sciences, the Abbasids also developed the classical Islamic style of art and architecture. Muslims believe that it is sacrilegious for people to attempt to recreate Allah's work. Therefore, Islamic art generally avoids depicting humans or animals. Instead, Islamic art focuses on intricate geometric patterns and beautiful calligraphy containing verses from the Quran. Like the Greeks, Muslims believe that mathematical patterns are a form of universal truth created by Allah. Scripture is another form of truth because, like mathematics, it originates from the Almighty. This explains why most Islamic buildings feature these design elements as opposed to sculptures or paintings of people and animals as might be common in other religious buildings. The Abbasids did away with the pro-Arab favoritism that characterized the Umayyad Caliphate. They made it possible for non-Arabs to serve in high-ranking government and military positions, something that was forbidden by the Umayyads. They were also much less militaristic than the Umayyads, which created a time of peace and prosperity for the people of the Muslim world. Unfortunately, the good times didn't last forever. Like the previous caliphate, the Abbasids became corrupt and very wasteful. Furthermore, most caliphs had many sons who often fought each other to gain power when the caliph died. Eventually, the Islamic caliphate began to break apart. Far away parts of the empire started to act independently, and some even established their own caliphates. This political division further weakened the Abbasids. By the 11th century, Baghdad was completely overrun by a group of nomads from Central Asia known as the Seljuk Turks. The Abbasid rulers maintained their supreme religious authority over Islam. However, political power was now wielded by a Turkish military commander who assumed the title of Sultan, which meant the holder of power. The Turkish Sultans did hold power right up until the 13th century when the Mongols invaded and we know what the Mongols do. They destroy things. Well, the Mongols completely destroyed Baghdad. And this was the final blow that spelled the end of the Golden Age of Islam and the Islamic Caliphates. After the fall of the Abbasid Caliphate, the Islamic world became politically divided. And it's still that way today. Now, Islam is the world's second largest religion but there's no single religious, political, or any other kind of authority to unite them all together. However, there are some people who want to see history repeat itself, I suppose, in some ways, and they want to change all that. You might have heard of groups in the news like ISIS. You know, ISIS is a group in the Middle East that thinks they're trying to reestablish an Islamic caliphate. However, they're doing it in probably the most horrible and barbaric way possible. For one thing, they kill innocent people including other Muslims and Christians and Jews. This is totally contrary to what the Islamic Caliphates did. Remember, they were tolerant of other people. 
The other thing about the Islamic Caliphates is that they understood the value of learning, science, art, and they also knew that they could learn from other cultures. ISIS definitely doesn't do those things. You might have heard that recently ISIS destroyed the Temple of Bel in Palmyra, which is in Syria. This temple is one of the oldest temples in the world, especially in the Mediterranean region. It was considered a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and they blew it to smithereens because it was pre-Islamic. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds like the least Islamic thing in the world. You know, Islam is a religion that's all about peace and tolerance and respect for not only knowledge, but human life. So guys like ISIS are anything but Muslims. I would say that you could barely call them human beings. Anyways, I don't want to get on a soapbox because we're done with our video lecture. Yay! So now what you need to do is go over your notes, go to Moodle, take that video quiz, go ahead and ace it because it's really not that hard. Guys, come on, it's multiple choice. Get your daily grade and then you'll be ready for class with all this information that you learned from this video quiz. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, guys. Have a great day. We get there, I'm not a, we get there.